Shalom, hey bros and sheepers. Welcome to the channel. I'm Old Phil Disciple and we're going to cruise with Jesus and, and just discuss a few things. Um, it's been quite an interesting morning already um, for me here today. Uh, some things that uh, me and my wife can, can take away and uh, build upon. And so I'm going to turn the camera around here in just a minute and we'll talk about these things and it, maybe it'll help you and give you something to think about um, for yourselves and for your own safety and protection. Okay, so, all right. Um, so this morning, right after I went to work, uh, maybe, I, well, I was about 40 miles away. Uh, and I just got to my first lease. And my wife called me and told me she was going to take a shower and then get started on the day. Uh, what we discussed of doing and getting done today um, in lieu of everything that possibly could go on or go wrong or, or whatever. You know, just, just little things uh, need to tighten up around the ship. And she no longer hung up the phone with me and she called right back and said somebody was coming in the back window in my daughter's room. And of course my daughter's is um, not there right now. Uh, and so I didn't have to worry about that, but somebody's coming in my house. And my wife had just got undressed to get into the shower. And I, I warned her over and over this, this morning I don't care what you're doing. Do not let me catch you um, more than arm's length away from your pistol. And so, of course, she had her pistol with her. Um, and so I told her, I said, get out of the house. I said, tell, let them know you're there in a very firm voice um, and you have a gun and you will end them. And so I heard her say that and of course that heightened up my anxiety a little bit because I'm, I'm 35 miles away there's nothing I can do about it um, at this point uh, our police department the police officers live in the next town they they don't get there till almost eight o'clock um, so they're of no no factor and we know this and so it's you know um, we we look at these scenarios all the time, but when something like that goes hot, um, then training and uh, security policies that you have, have talked about and enacted um, come into play quick, fast, in a hurry. <coughs> well, she's undressed completely, and, and I'm hollering at her to get out of the damn house. Or she's modest and she's not about to run out of the house without no clothes on and we have some people staying staying there at the motel that uh, I told her get over there uh, safety in numbers but mainly get out of the house remove yourself from the threat you know uh, not that you can't eliminate the threat if you have to but I'd rather you just remove yourself from the threat and I'm on my way and of course I made it there in about 15 minutes but um, wound up being the wind that kicked up here and it blew a tree branch into the window in my daughter's room and busted it out and of course that sounded like somebody coming through there After she got out of the house, you know, we got a big fence all the way around the house. I told her, I said, well, keep your, keep your distance. Um, stay on the outside of the fence. That way, they, if they come back out of the house, if they are in there, if there is someone in there, um, they can't get to you. I'm go check it out, kind of see what's going on. And, of course, she did that. She come back. She said, yeah, the window's busted out. Damn it, there's somebody in my house. Well, as I, got, as I rolled up, the first thing I noticed was there's still snow on the ground all around the house. And I looked 
immediately and didn't see no footprints and so I'm like well they didn't fly in there so I think we're okay but I'm, I'm still gonna go check it out and of course she hadn't been back in the house yet so I arm her up and, and I head in the house and make my presence known and all is good and the first thing I notice is my Glock laying right there on my shelf where it always lays um, I have my EDC that I carry and then um, here lately I've been carrying my AR but I have a Glock that sits on my on my shelf and so I told her I was like um, next time you exit the house don't leave a readily available weapon locked and loaded for your enemy because now if they weren't armed they are now of course I got several other firearms in the house that they could arm themselves with but uh, that Glock would be a whole lot more efficient to become a threat and a problem and so I told you just I want you to think about everything that happened this morning from from the time you realized that there was an issue until the time you were completely removed from the threat and the situation evaluate everything that you did evaluate the time it took you to throw on your little robe and, and your little house shoes and, and get out of the house um, and evaluate all the, the successes and the um, the positives, the negatives, the mistakes. And so if something like that ever happened and it was a real situation, you, you would have a better uh, grasp to act rather than react. <coughs> and so, you know, um, it's good that it happened. You know, of course, I got a broken window right now and a tree branch that I got to get, when I get done with work today, I got to get my chainsaw and, and fix. And it wasn't a tree branch that was a, it was a problem. We just had some major wind come through there. Um, I talked to a lady up at, at our convenience store when I headed back out of town. She said, man, that wind this morning, it, it just come out of nowhere. It was crazy. And so we probably had 40, 50 mile an hour gusts come through there. And busted out the window. Yeehaw, man, I gotta replace the window. But as I as I thought about it, I said that that's that's great that that happened. That that gave my wife a firsthand um, training situation that was not a threat. Turned out not to be a threat, but in real time, it was a very serious threat. Because who's coming in my house at seven o'clock in the morning, and why? at this point in the game. I'm thinking, man, you're bold, you're brass. Uh, everybody in our little community knows that, that we carry and we're armed at all times. Why would you break, you know, breaking into my house, you, serious situation. But regardless, you know, I mean, people do stupid things for stupid reasons. Um, sometimes just to do evil, do harm. So I give her an opportunity to go in a real life situation that wasn't actually a real life situation and give her the opportunity to to build upon and take away from and add to um, a future situation that could be a real crisis. And so I figured I would make this video on that, that it might stimulate thought to y'all that, you know what, we, we, we train you know, those of us that, that carry and we're armed and we, you know, we go out and shoot regularly and stay proficient with our firearms and all that. We do all these things, but sometimes we take the element of excitement, panic, um, emotions. We don't involve that in our training a whole lot. And so it's something that, and it's something that we really can't um, add to when we're training because, you know, unless you really think that there's a serious threat, your emotions are going to remain calm. You can't just force yourself to panic. I don't, I can't. 
Um, of course, I've been in a lot of several serious life-threatening situations and I've never panicked to the point where I was uh, unable to, to make rational decisions. Um, I've seen some people that have completely lost it over things and I've never understood that. You know, I just I have this way of coming under calm. Um, and my wife does too, to a point. Um, but when my wife was uh, 16, 17 years old, she had a guy break in her, in her house and, and stabbed her multiple times with a butcher knife that he'd take two butcher knives to his hands and come in there and, and, and stabbed her and two of her friends without the grace of God in his hand upon her she shouldn't be here by all means today and the way he stabbed her there's no rational reason that we even got to have kids and we have two wonderful daughters um, but that's beside the point the the point being is, is she's been in these situations before and it was serious but at that point in life, she wasn't trained to handle any situation. Where today she's a whole lot more uh, capable of defending herself uh, from a would-be attacker that, would, that wishes to be harmed. And this situation was able to bring those emotions into this situation. And we got to put all the elements of a of a, of a life-threatening situation of someone wishing to do you harm. We got to put all these elements together in a training scenario that we didn't realize was a training scenario in real time. And so it's it's actually a blessing. And, and I, I believe and trust in the Most High Yahweh that He does things for a reason. And with all the things that are going on right now, that could have been a huge blessing this morning of giving her that little bit of edge without there being a true situation. And so, y'all think about that. Um, I know you can't train for that. Um, it's something that you just, you have to, to mentally prepare yourself for. It's me or them. And I have to stay rational in my thinking during the situation and stay calm the best I can. Of course, I don't care, you know, how well trained up you are and even how many situations like that you've been in. Your emotions are always going to come up into a heightened sense of, of emotional response. But it's something you can't train for. Um, but think about, you know, making this video because you can think about things that you know what if that happened to me and maybe you're a, you're a female watching this and I did all the right things but I did exactly what your wife did and I left a live pistol readily available for the would-be attacker to use against me and if I hadn't have said this you might not have thought about it those little things, you know, sometimes some people people think, go through things and say things that uh, bring in thoughts that you normally wouldn't have thought about, you know. <clears throat> kind of like going camping. You know? I know what I need to go camping. Because I've been doing it since I was a baby with my dad and then as I grew up camping's just always been a big part of my life but there's always something that someone that's going with me will say hey what about this and I'll go wow I'm glad you said that I, 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 I wouldn't have missed it but now that I have it it'll make it a little more pleasurable uh, make it a little more comfortable stimulating thought and that's you know as a pastor, I urge people to come to church, not because that's what saves you, but come to church to fellowship with like-minded believers to stimulate thought, you know? Maybe a brother will say something that 
might bring you out of depression or maybe you say something that might bring him out of depression or whatever the case may be. When God said it's not good for man to be alone, he didn't just mean for a man to have a, a, a companion or a woman to have a companion of the opposite sex and that alone. No, he meant it's not good for man to be alone. Man needs to have um, camaraderie, brothers, sisters that he interacts with on a regular basis to stimulate thought. So, now think about that. Uh, think about that scenario happening to you. Um, and then look around at your surroundings and see what might be an issue that you haven't thought about going into this point. Because um, we're going into some perilous times. Um, I have a fairly good idea that within the next week we're going to see something crazy. Whatever it may be. And I don't know. Um, I do know that I have a couple of sources that have told me to make sure that I've got um, food and water for at least 10 days. I'm like, well, you know me. Uh, I've got plenty of food and water for 10 days. <coughs> but think about it um, I've never I, I will never be more happy to be wrong about something in all my life than to look back at this in three months and go nothing happened I was wrong thank you Yahweh I will be so happy to be wrong but guys I listen to and trust uh, a couple of people that I have that are, are very reliable resources that don't just run their mouth or run their head for things um, and everything I would say get prepared y'all um, I don't know where you live I don't know uh, if you live in a, a metropolitan area no-brainer you should already be prepared after what COVID has already done you should be already well prepared all of us should be I mean what what's went down in COVID should have been a wake-up call for any of us that we're just kind of half-assing it and kind of just dragging our feet on um, being able to to survive on our own without society operating the way society's operated for the last 40 years without a hiccup. At the beginning of COVID, we had quite the hiccup around here. I know in my county, um, there was nowhere you could go to buy any kind of nutrition. It was gone. They hit the, all the people hit the stores and if you didn't have food, you wasn't gonna get none. And so that little hiccup should have been a wake-up call for a lot of people and I hope it was um, because that's what I what I'm I'm preparing myself for is this going two three months without being able to go to the grocery store and Joe Bob and, and Billy from down the street have been a week without food and their kids are are starving and they're hungry and they're crying and now their moralities left the building and they're going out scavenging, pillaging, and to find food. And that pillaging is not gonna come from on the ground, it's gonna come from homes. That they're gonna go, sorry, uh, normally I was a, a good guy and I'd have never hurt you, but my kids are hungry and now I'm going to take your food order to do so I have to kill you that's what I'm preparing for are those type people that today give you the shirt off their back call them up they come help you fix anything you've got but in a month from now and they don't have food and water 
resources. Morality's gone. My family comes first, and that means if I have to kill you for it, so be it. That's what I'm preparing for around here. Uh, I think everybody's pretty like-minded, but there's, I don't care how, how many are like-minded, there's gonna be those certain few that just don't wanna get in line, and they've got two days worth of food in their house. No water, no cleaning supplies, and they're just counting on society and um, the infrastructure to just keep on rocking and rolling. No issue. Those are the ones I'm looking at. Those are the ones that I'm preparing myself for to come to do me harm. And so, and then there's those ones that use these type of um, failures in society to do harm, to do evil, you know? It's a, a good excuse to do evil. And they thrive on that. And there's those people. There's those people. Um, and so, where I live is far few and in between, but there's still those people. Um, and I'm, I'm preparing for it. I'm preparing for the worst and, and hoping I'm wrong and hoping for the best. full faith in Yahweh that no matter how it goes it's going to go according to his plan his purpose and his ways whether I like the outcome or not and so I hope y'all not only have your, your physical houses in order but you have your spiritual house in order as well because that may be the difference between going mad and losing your mind Panicking in a certain situation or not. Just the trust and love that I have for Yahweh has kept me calm through some situations that normally there's no way I would stay calm through. I would have blew my stack, lost my temper, and made piss poor decisions and choices. But because of the trust, and the love I have for, for Yahweh, the relationship I have for Yahweh, um, I was able to remain calm in some pretty serious situations over the last few years. <clears throat> and so I hope and I urge you, if your physical house is in good shape, evaluate your spiritual house and make sure your spiritual house is in order as well. Y'all be blessed. Be encouraged in all ways. Let the word of Yahweh frustrate you to go look it up for yourself so you can trust Yahweh more and more and your relationship grow with Him more and more and better and better day by day. Y'all been hanging with Jesus, cruising with Jesus, hanging with the old field beside. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, give it a Give it a little like, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video. You know, might save someone's life because they stimulated thought that they normally wouldn't have thought of. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it's just another one of those videos. Either way, y'all be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus.